Hi everyone, news from Santorini. So there's a few things going on. Some seismologists are saying that Nea Kameni, that's this island that you see here, I'll zoom in, um, that this is this area here where we have seen volcanic eruptions in the 1950s, that the volcano there has been activated, although we haven't seen any seismic swarms there yet. And the cable car, the famous cable car at the old port seems to be at risk from landslides, and more. So this is not good news ahead of tourist season. But what is this massive earthquake swarm doing that we've been watching basically since the end of January? So there's still earthquakes, as you see here, in this area where the main earthquake swarm has been happening all the time. And the blinking here, that's the latest earthquakes. That's a 2.1 shallow at a depth of only two kilometers. So the theory was that from the magma chamber underneath Santorini, we have seen one or several magma intrusions going towards the island of Amorgas. That's why all the islands that are around this area have also been declaring the state of emergency, like like Amorgos, Ionos, and also Anudros. So this earthquake swarm is still there. If we look at the list here, the latest, a 2.1, a 1.6, that was somewhere else that was not in the Santorini area. But we did have a 3.0 just today on February 27th, uh, 2.0, 2.8, 3.1, so it's still in the three ranges, which is still, if it's volcanic, and scientists in the meantime are sure that it is volcanic, it's still in the higher ranges. So that could still indicate that something's moving there. And if we scroll back, there's a 2.4 that's not in the area, but let's have a look A 1.8. Okay, that's not in the area. So it seems that seismic waves maybe are traveling. I don't know, it's hard to tell. But where's this 2.5 that is here? So you see there's other earthquakes in this area, but still the cluster is here. So this is one within the last six hours. That's a 2.5 at six kilometers. There was a 1.2 at three kilometers. And then we see 1.6 the green ones that's within the last 48 hours so something is still happening on the 27th the list is still long there was a 3.7 that's how yesterday ended so 3.7 they have always an error between plus minus 0.3 so this could have been a four as well usually this the university of athens has them lower than the usgs for example um there was another 2.2 so you see yesterday wasn't super super quiet there's still a list of earthquakes there's another 3.1 that was in the area 3.3 very close together so the phenomenon is still happening um but it's definitely less earthquakes not such a dense cluster but we did have a 4.0 yesterday in the middle of that swarm so hopefully it will die down and nothing will happen but it can catch up at any time because Something could be refilling here. We could see another magma intrusion. We could also see from all that rumbling, there's so many fault lines that are in there. They could have been triggered by this. And while we're watching the earthquakes here, um, I want to tell you about this area here that we're seeing here that is called Nea Kameni. And you see, if we zoom in, it looks really very volcanic. There's a few boats in the bays there, but you see the lava flows. These are the recent lava flows, probably from the 1950 eruptions. I'll also show you a video how these eruptions were taking place. And yes, the Nea Kameni Island um, experts are warning that the volcano in that Nea Kameni island in the Aegean Sea has been activated. 
And that's why scientists remain on yellow alert. They're not going back to green alert. We know that people are going back to the island now, but a leading Greek seismologist, his name is Panagiotis Papadimitriou, he has warned that this inlet, this islet, little island in there has been activated since this current earthquake swarm began in late January. So he is a professor emeritus of seismology at the University of Athens. And he says, so far, we don't see it rumbling. We did see some isolated earthquakes here and there underneath Nea Kameni during that swarm, but there wasn't a cluster swarm that would indicate that magma's rising up there and would like to erupt on that island again. Um, so also he says seismic activity will either weaken, which is doing right now, or it will lead up to an earthquake of magnitude 6 to 6.3, which is not forecasted at the moment to cause a serious impact on the surrounding islands as the distance from the epicenter would be over 12.4 miles. But so far it's weakening and we hope that it's dying down. And he also said that even if we saw a bigger earthquake that this would probably accelerate the completion of the seismic sequence. But who knows, right? The cable car, let's talk about the cable car. So they have checked the cable car and experts agree that there is an increased risk uh, for a landslide. And because that cable car is located on the slopes of the caldera, basically abo above the island's old port, and it's facing increased landslide risk because of all these thousands of earthquakes, over 24,000 earthquakes since January 26 that have struck the island. That is crazy, right? That can destabilize these cliffs, these volcanic rocks that are quite brittle and unstable already. So a leading authority has warned about that um, following an inspection of the site. So they already have inspected it. And um, Ftumis Lekas, he's the president of the Hellenic Earthquake Planning and Protection Organization, has joined forces with officials from the Hellenic Survey of Geology and Mineral Exploration. They did an inspection of the area and they noted that improvements for enhanced protection are needed. And I'm wondering if this is the only site because we've heard from Akistilentis that he's pretty sure that um, many, many of these buildings, the majority of the buildings that are built into these cliffs have structural deficiencies. And I've made a video about this where he quote said, for 1500 euros a night, we're risking the lives of our guests if they're staying in these buildings. That is all not good news ahead of tourist season. That's why the Greek government is also considering to give out aid packages. So they're rolling this out slowly, I think. So... About the inspection of that area, now the agencies will say, they said that they will launch a rapid response effort focusing on areas where immediate action can be taken, including repairing damaged fences, netting, and wall failures to ensure that we can welcome tourists. That's what they were saying. But Akistilantis is also saying, you know, you can't just do like visual inspections. You need to go deeper. And that's the same issue, by the way, that we're having in Pozzuoli in Italy at the Campi Flegre supervolcano after that earthquake swarm that has rattled the area parallel to Santorini. And the residents are now saying, well, you go in there, you do some visits visual inspections, but we need more. We need to know that we're safe in these homes. So what they're also saying is that they are working on longer term protect protection projections, um, but that will last until summer. And they said, we must take into account when we're doing this, the significant risk and exposure with probably 1.5 million tourists per year that are using this cable car. So they better, I mean, maybe they should put it out of service, but again, this is a major tourist hotspot, right? And, and, and they're also saying in addition to the cable car, there's also a, a trail, a hiking trail. So many more are using the path to the south. So 
They're saying authorities must identify safe gathering points in the event of a major earthquake or a landslide, as well as determine the maximum number of people allowed at the old port down there. And he says, because until now, crowds there have sometimes reached as many as 2,000 people um, at the same time. And Lekka has also said that the dangers at such spectacular locations can never be completely eliminated. Because you have to imagine, it's not only maybe if there's a landslide and you're in the cable car, if there's 2,000 people down there at that port and the landslide hits them, that that is very, very dangerous. And, you know, they're basically telling the tourists, you can never be completely safe with that geological setting that is taking place there. And, and then this is the usual thing that they're saying, right? While natural phenomena like earthquakes, landslides, and volcanoes create an incredibly beautiful landscape, which they did here in Greece, they also pose significant risks. So I always say, if you go on vacation, is it really worth using that cable car and standing down there at this old port being so exposed? And another interesting thing is they have um, found fossilized olive leaves that are coming from a tree that was growing on Santorini or Tyra as it was formerly named 60,000 years ago and they are basically immortalized in volcanic ash. So they are a testimony of eruptions that were taking place and basically the volcanic ash has encased them after an eruption. And they were discovered at an old pumice quarry on the outskirts of Tyra, that's now a town um, on Santorini. And they have found even more plant fossil sites in abandoned quarries nearby on the island, which was almost completely destroyed in a later eruption that occurred in the year 1650 BC. And that has blown apart the island that at that time was called Tyra by its Minoan inhabitants. And it's said to have destroyed the Minoan culture. And all that was left from that blow was a rim of land encircling a caldera that is now known as Santorini. So if we look at the aerial picture of Santorini now, that crescent-shaped island marks one of the most cataclysmic eruptions that have ever taken place within recorded history. This is a dangerous place. And then also, guys, if that's of interest, many historians also believe that it forms the basis for the legend of Atlantis, an island which similarly fell back into the sea. And if you're ever on Santorini, you can watch these fossilized leaves um, at the Museum of Prehistoric Tyra. It's in the capital, Fira, on Santorini. And what the interesting part about these olive leaves is also um, the University of Athens has researched that and they say the olive leaves and among other finds like feathers and olive stones show that hundreds of not naturally occurring plants like domesticated plants like olive, mastic and pistachio trees were preserved in the volcanic ash of successive eruptions thousands of years ago. So it's a testimony of the culture that has lived on the island. So guys, it remains interesting in Greece and I'll follow up for you with that. I have just released a very interesting video about what is going on underneath the super volcano Campi Fligri, the burning fields in Italy. I'll put it here in the end screen, guys. If you're new here, hey, subscribe, click the notification bell so that you're always on the pulse with me when something happens. And thanks for supporting this channel, guys. If you want to support the channel, become a supporting member, like with a monthly membership for behind the scenes videos, outtakes, uh, funny stuff, angry stuff, stuff like this. The link is in the description of this video or click the join button. And if you want to buy me fuel, keep me running, buy me a coffee, support the channel on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. I would love to see you there. You can follow me there for free. Um, the link is also in the description of this video. Guys, I hope you're safe and I hope you're doing great. And I see you very, very soon, guys. Bye-bye.